And welcome in to the Fun Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller with you on Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Wishing you the very best. And I thought it would be kind of a cool thing today to set looking at what's overhead in the sky. Although Saturn does turn retrograde tonight to celebrate Mother's Day. Let's put that aside, and we'll talk about that tomorrow, by the way, so be sure to catch that. That will be our theme tomorrow as Saturn's retrograde. It doesn't happen until almost midnight Eastern time, so we've got plenty of time to unpack that as the first really full day of it begins tomorrow. So where do moms show up in our charts? So I thought maybe I would do something that I rarely do here, and that is dip into my own chart and show you the picture, because there are a couple of places that astrologers look first to determine parental influences in our charts. Now, if you followed the Subconscious Mind Mastery podcast, my other podcast, you know my backstory, and you know that my relationship with my mom was challenged. It was challenged really for my entire life, but especially as I went to college is, was the turning point of, I would say, deterioration. Why? Because I actually started to express a voice, and that didn't go so well. So my mom was an Aquarian, born in early February. Now, astrologers will say, first, look at the 10th house. Look at your 10th house to determine some characteristics around your mom. Now, this is another area where I deviate from kind of my norm because I've really gotten comfortable going to the whole sign chart system. But the modern chart system of Placidus is where I go for this analysis because it just fits the whole situation better. So if you're going on any of the major chart programs online to look at your 10th house, astro.com or astro-seek.com or one of those, you're going to get a Placidus chart. So when I cast my eyes to the 10th house on my chart, I notice that Pisces is in the cusp. Now, Pisces would indicate spirituality. My mom was very spiritual. She was very religious. And of course, we know there's a big difference in those two things. But she did have a very spiritual heart indeed. So there's Pisces. Now in Placidus, Aries also shows up in my 10th house. And interestingly, so does the south node of the moon. So this is what you can do in your own chart, is take a look at the action that's going on in Placidus in the 10th house. What signs are there? How do they paint that relationship? So obviously the other side of the relationship with my mom was this Aries war that went on for, like I said, it, it disrupted our family. I mean, it made it very difficult for us to get together. So this wasn't just me. We all felt it, but I certainly experienced it, and my chart reflects it. I don't know my brother's birth time, and, and we don't talk astrology by agreement, so I, don't, I, I wouldn't ask for his to know what is in his 10th house. But I'll bet it's not Aries because my brother had a completely different relationship and handled her challenges differently than I did. So my die was cast with Aries in the 10th house. You are going to have challenges in a warlike area with your mom. Now, the south node being in there is not insignificant by any means because that means the north node is down in Libra and happens to cast into the fourth house, which is where astrologers say to look for dad. Now, we'll roll the dad piece of this up into Father's Day, so let's stay with mom. But to make this really concise, my spiritual path in this life was exhibited to me by my parents, with my mom showing me what I needed to leave, and my dad showing me or modeling to me who I needed to become. And that's exactly reflected in the chart. In fact, if I had never looked at an astrology chart then, and somebody was analyzing my life, including the total package, which involves mom and dad, an astute counselor would say, gosh, your dad really showed you the way, didn't he? And that's the situation. 
Now, with a little bit more mixed color here, some astrologers will point to Venus. Obviously, you would think the feminine. And actually, when you're looking at dad, you look at the sun and then as kind of a backdrop, Saturn. Well, with mom, it's the moon and then Venus. So you can look to Venus for some additional color. I'd rather not focus on that here for the sake of time, but you can do that. Find the house and sign where Venus is. I'd really rather focus here on the moon. So you can take a look at where the moon is in your chart, what sign it is in, and what house it is in, and start to get some additional color to how mom shows up. I have nothing to offer here from my own chart for a couple of reasons, because I didn't get a moon. You say, wait a minute, Thomas, every astrological chart has a moon in it. What do you mean? You're missing one? No, I'm not missing one, but there's a concept that ancient astrologers practiced called under the beams. And that means if the moon is too close to the sun, or any planet is too close to the sun, that the sun's beams or the light or the influence of the sun basically casts a diminishing shadow over that other planet. And that's 16 degrees away. Well, my moon is within 16 degrees. And I always kind of looked at my chart, and as I was studying this, I thought, dang, moon, it just doesn't make sense. My moon does not make sense. And it doesn't make sense here either. But yours probably will. So take a look at the sign and house that your moon is in, and especially look at the aspects. Now, here's one that does make sense. They say you can look at the, if your moon has any aspects to Chiron, and boy, mine does. I have a trine from the moon to Chiron, and Chiron is in Aquarius in the ninth house. So that brings, there's that whole religious spirituality thing. So it does. It, it says that this whole dynamic with my mother is going to challenge and cause me to grow in, in the wounded healer, right? Chiron, the wounded healer, the, the wound that doesn't heal will involve spirituality, Aquarian independence, and of course, mom. Ah, <laughs> oh, you moms, we love you out there, and we are wishing you the very, very best Mother's Day, one that you will never forget. Boy, send your mom some love today if she is still in the physical realm. And if she's not in the physical realm, you might just ask her for a tip or two to get through this. <laughs> I think our moms who are not with us here on Earth are all looking down with their arms of love around us. That's for sure. I've had mine come in and say that very thing. All right. We will talk to you tomorrow when we talk about Saturn turning around and going retrograde. So have a great Mother's Day. Bye-bye.